Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today we're going to go over basic probability statistics and specifically we're going to describe the OR statement. Please keep Alpha Training and Consulting in mind when you're looking for someone to prepare you for an ASQ certification exam. We love preparing students for ASQ certifications. We've been doing it for 20 years and we've become very good at it, so please consider us. All right, back to the statement at hand. We're going to discuss the OR statement today. And to do that, we're going to go to the whiteboard first, then we'll come back to the PowerPoint. We'll do a couple example problems and finish this up. Uh, so let's go to the whiteboard. All right, so here we are at the whiteboard. So let's discuss the OR statement. So remember there's an AND and OR statement. Last week we went over the AND statement. This week we're going to go over the OR statement. For you reliability engineers, that would be like a parallel uh, system, mechanical system. It's valve A, this is valve B, we're trying to fill the bucket full of water. And what's the probability of A, valve A or valve B working? Okay, so that's the kind of what you symbolize it as, at least in one of the scenarios. And the OR statement comes with an assumption. Remember the AND statement come, came with an assumption. And the assumption for the AND statement was independence. The assumption for the OR statement is uh, mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. So uh, sometimes people haven't heard that before. So let me explain. Uh, think of me having a coin. And there's one event that's flipping the coin. See if I get a heads or tails. Notice I said OR heads or tails, okay? Mutually exclusive event means that in one event, you can only get heads or tails. You can't get heads and tails in one event. That's mutually exclusive when it's physically impossible to get uh, more than just one event. So the flipping of a coin is an example. When I flip a coin and I'm looking to get heads or tails, okay, uh, I can't get both. Because it's physically impossible for me to get both outcomes in one trial, it is mutually exclusive. So the flipping of a coin. Let me draw a coin here just so you can remember. Students have it difficult with this one. Here's the coin. And uh, the flipping of a coin is a mutually exclusive event. Because in one trial, you can only get heads or tails. You can't get both. And that's what mutually exclusive is. Now, if you, so if you say it's an OR statement, and you say, is it mutually exclusive? And you say, yes, it is mutually exclusive. It's very simple. What do you do? You just add them together. And we know that. If this coin was uh, perfectly balanced, it'd be 50% heads, 50% for tails. So what's the probability of getting heads or tails? 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1, or 100%. So that's how the OR statement works if it's mutually exclusive. If you say no, it is not mutually exclusive. It's not mutually exclusive. Uh, no. Then the mathematical expression or equation is this. Probability of A, or I'm sorry, probability of A or B, right? Probability of A or B events taking place equals probability of A plus probability of B. Okay, just like over here, correct? But we're not finished yet is the problem. <laughs> Minus probability of A times probability of B. There it is. Probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A times probability of B. And there's another equation for this one. This works good if you have uh, you know, a backup system of two valves here, okay? That, this formula works real well. Probability of A uh, plus probability of B minus probability of A times probability of B. Uh, that works good, but what if we have three? Okay, this equation doesn't work as efficiently anymore if there's three. So, let's go up here and do three then this is the equation you should use. You could use the, uh, you can use this one for two also. 
but oftentimes they publish that other formula. That's why I wanted to go over it. But if you ha if you want to use this formula, you can one minus one minus probability of A times one minus probability of B. And so that is if you only had two right there, the equation would end. If not, then you go one minus probability of C. And you can keep going on. It doesn't stop at three. If you have four, five, six, or whatever, this equation is very flexible. So if there was another one, you just go one minus probability of uh, D. I ran out of room, so I'll stop. But this formula will meet what it, however many redundant systems you have. So this is a pretty nice formula here. But whichever one, they're mathematically equivalent if you take off this third one and use that first equation, probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A times probability of B. It's mathematically equivalent to this one with those two iterations there. So that's good to know. Now let's go back to the PowerPoint and do some example problems. All right, here we are back at the PowerPoint. And so the mathematical formula for the OR statement is addition if the events are mutually exclusive. Just like I explained in the, um, white, on the whiteboard. For example, if you are to flip a coin, a mutually exclusive, a mutually exclusive event, what are the odds of a heads or tails event? Probability of heads is 0.5. Probabilities of tails is 0.5. Perfectly balanced coin. So how do you solve this? We did it at the whiteboard, this is just a review. Uh, the odds are 50% for heads, 50% for tails, and because they're mutually exclusive, you add the probabilities together, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 equals one. So the odds of a heads or tails taking place during a given event is equal to 100%. This is an obvious solution to a common sense problem. However, the example does show how simple the OR statement is. If, two prob if the two probabilities in consideration are mutually exclusive. In other words, the two events cannot happen at the same time <clears throat> or simultaneously, in other words. So that's how you do that one. But what happens if the probability problem is stated as an AND, as an OR state type statement? I'm sorry, let me read that again. But what happens if the probability problem is stated as an OR type problem and is not mutually exclusive? For example, assume you have two cars, car A and car B, in order to uh, get to work, car A or car B must start. What are the odds of making it to work on time? Well, if you go out and try to start them, they could both start. Therefore, it is not a mutually exclusive event. Car A starting or car B starting is not a mutually exclusive event because it is possible for both cars to start. In other words, events A and B can happen simultaneously, which is another way of saying that two events are not mutually exclusive. So here's the equation. Remember, I gave you two equations on the whiteboard. I'm just going to use this one because we only have two cars. So the formula shown below is used to calculate probabilities in OR statement problems that are not mutually exclusive. There it is. Now we will use the OR not mutually exclusive formula to solve a problem. Calculate the odds of making it to work if car A or car B must start. We know they're not mutually exclusive events per our previous conversation. So we're going to take these two, we're going to add them, then we're going to subtract the product. So we're going to subtract the product from the sum is really what that formula says. So let's put them in there, 0 0.47, 0 0.22, minus 0 0.47 times 0 0.22. Of course, you always do multiplication first, so you go 0 0.47 times 0 0.22, uh, add them together, 0 0.47 plus 0 0.22, and then subtract. And what does it give us? 58.66% probability of success. And now you know the OR statement in basic probability statistics. Again, please keep us in mind for any of your ASQ certification preparation needs. Notice I have uh, all the different classes here. I even have more than that, but the ones listed here. If you're interested in the CQE, you can go to this website, uh, www.asqcqe.com. Uh, maybe you're interested in the CRE, that's www.asqcre.com. Anyway, pick your class, pick your website. It'll have many videos there explaining that certification and how our classes go about preparing you as well. And if you have any other questions, of course, you can contact me. There's my email address.
All right, thank you for joining me in this video. I hope you learned something new that will enhance your career. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.